With every video clip, I would like you to grow in the skills of leadership that you have. And if this video clip has helped you, please pass it on to your friends or send us a comment because we want to get better at what we're doing. So today we're going to be talking about what is mentoring. Jesus said in Mark chapter 3, that he had chosen his leaders so that he could be with them. Well, we know that the author, the author Mark said this. And this meant that Jesus wasn't just choosing the folk just to sit in a school with him, but he wanted them to live with him. And Jesus also gave the command or the commission when he went to heaven in Matthew 28, 19, go to all the nations and make disciples of them. Make disciples. And that means for you and for me that we should be doing mentoring, that we should be offering mentoring, that we should be the mentors of others, our mentees. And then Paul describes his interaction with the church in Thessalonica. He knew what Jesus had said, he'd heard from others. And so he had this experience or hearing of it, and here he says, in his understanding of mentoring, in 1 Thessalonians 2, 7, we read, as apostles of Christ, we have the every right to demand something of you. But we were gentle with you as a mother who nurtures and cares for her children. We loved you so much that we not only brought you God's good news, but we also shared our own lives with you. In verse 11, you know that we were to you as a father to his children. We encouraged and comforted each one of you and exhorted you to live in such a way that God would be pleased with you, for he has called you into his kingdom and to share his glory with him. And that's where we can learn a lot from Paul in the way he carried out what he felt God required of him. And that's what we're wanting to move forward in. So mentoring involves sharing life in the same way that we share the privilege of leading and, and developing people. But we need to realize as well that there's also pain. We'll have the highs and the lows. We're going to be sharing our victories, but also those things that haven't gone well. We need, to, we need to help folk learning, learn from what we have had as um, things that haven't gone well. And when we are mentors, it means that we don't always see immediately what successes we have with people. You could be sitting with someone for two hours, be talking to them, be really honest and open. They could be discussing things with you. But in that moment, we don't know how this will change the life of your mentee. On the other hand, sometimes we see the sum of what we've given, the, the inputs, and we can see how the, life, the lives are changed. And this is what mentoring means. Mentoring for me means the interpreting of the mentee's life and faith experiences so he or she can grow in, de in devotion and relationship with God. It's always good to see how intimacy in a relationship promotes that devotion to God. And I'm as often asked, how, how can I improve or develop the commitment in my team? And I always ask, how much time do you spend with your team? The moment you spend more time, that intimacy in the relationship does grow, and that helps promote growth with each person in your team. So what does mentoring mean concretely? 
I think it means we need to teach. We need to have a topic. What functions really well in the church where I have responsibility, we've had topics, themes. And later on, we one-to-one -one actually have feedback. We chat together so that there's, there's a focus, there's direction. I feel it's very important that we have transparency and that we develop this this uh, transparency. There's no need, what's the point of meeting one-to-one -one if there's no honesty? There has to be honesty on my part, but also on the part of the one who's in that mentoring relationship with me. They need to be able to say, well, this is how I am at the moment. These are my battles. These are my challenges. And some chats that I've had in the past, or the best chats I've had, when someone has come to me with a problem and said, I'm, I'm battling at the moment, and it hasn't actually been the topic that we were planning to share with each other, but it's it just flowed out of their hearts in that moment and this really helped them. And that's why it's so, so important that a mentor listens. You need to listen to someone who you are wanting to help. You need to help them to help, uh, in their problem. You need to listen. It's pointless having a one-to-one -one chat when you're doing all the talking and you're just telling him what to do. That's not a healthy, effective relationship. I think that the mentor also needs to be able to ask those tough questions and really honest, tough questions. You need to ask them because this will help this person to move on and grow and develop. And of course, we're also there to answer questions and to give advice and manchma, and sometimes also a correction and sometimes a feedback. We need to give feedback to the person. And when we're wanting to expose some blind spots, this person has an opportunity to do something then. If I don't have that information, I can't do anything about it. But if I have information, then I can work with this. And suddenly I have something or I can see something that I never noticed before because it was a blind spot. And this is the same in, in a marriage. I'm a better leader today because I have my wife. And I noticed, I've noticed that there have been things in my life that were not in order. And I also see that yeah, right in the beginning, but even now, there are things I need to, where I need to grow. And there's some things that I didn't even realize in the beginning, but the feedback has helped me. It exposes my blind spots and I can do something about it. And that's why mentoring is so helpful. It's also about giving a future perspective for those that we are working with. We turn fear into courage. We listen to their dreams. And so we can help set goals. We need to create trust. I am with you. And now you may say, well, Wayne, this sounds so time intensive. Who has the time really for all of this? Then I want to say at this point, firstly, Every relationship, every intensive relationship that you have can have a limited time. You may say, look, it's for six months or for 10 months or for a year, and then it will come to an end. Or else it's important that you say, this relationship is so important for me for the development of my team that I'm prepared to invest my time. And I think it's important enough to develop and or to invest this time. And if you say, no, well, I don't have the same idea, then I want to say you have not understood the importance of what mentoring can mean in the life of your people. Isaac Newton said, if I have seen more than others, the reason is that I have stood on the shoulders of giants. And I want 
that everyone who's been in a mentoring relationship with me can stand on my shoulders and be better than I've ever been. That's the heart of a mentor. Questions for you. Number one. Honestly, ask yourself if you are ready to take on this time-intensive but effective task. Be honest. Think about this. Is this important enough for you? My opinion is it should be. And number two, if you have never had a young person or mentee, start by writing down three names and offer them a monthly meeting for this next six months. You will be amazed at what can come out of this.